Good day all. My name is uh, Captain Puneet Malhotra. I've been in command for almost 15 years. As we all know that because of the COVID-19, we all have been locked down at home. This is which I thought of something, doing something productive. Perhaps going back to my sea career, I thought if I could contribute towards our fraternity, our youngsters, the seafarers, from the pool of the knowledge, what I've acquired. And what I could perceive, what I think I do the best, because as for my past credentials, besides a master, I've also been a boarding master. I have imparted lots of training on board on this particular subject, that's hydrodynamics. And, you know, it's, you must do what you think you can do the best. And if your hobby becomes your passion, then it's nothing like it. So putting everything all together, in a nutshell, I was thinking that how could I impart the training and try to simplify the word which looks very big but it's not so what it is actually. So I thought of putting few things together with my own experience, I won't call it expertise, that I'll leave it on you, how you judge me. And I've tried to simplify the subject hydrodynamics in my own words, in my own way, with my own perception. I believe once I give a small demonstration of this, I guess most of you will be able to take something productive home. So let's begin with it. The subject of my lecture, as I said earlier, is hydrodynamics. But I made it a little bit more simplified, so I call it hydrodynamics simplified. I have jotted down a few questionnaires here, of course. They are going to increase as and in how I keep on completing the rota over here. To begin with it, the hydrodynamics, of course, it's pertaining to the water, the velocity, viscosity, density, and the water pressure. It depends where you are or where the vessel is, because if we take a small example, for example, when the water is passing through a pipeline, gushing through a pipeline, the pressure is the most in the center, but during the, uh, on the walls of the pipelines, it reduces. This is just a beginning. I will talk about initially, basically to go back to the basics. First, let's try to understand the basics. That's what is my main agenda. It's only once your roots are strong or once the base of a monument or a building is strong, the building automatically is, has got enough strength to withstand any external forces. That reminds me to another thing. When we talk about ship handling, ship handling is a composition of internal and external forces. Internal forces are the one what we have. The main engine, the steering, the vessel maneuverability. External forces, wind, sea, current, hydrodynamics, everything all collectively inclusive. The practical seamanship of a seaman matters upon how can you harmonize cohesively to use the external forces in your advantage so that you can safely maneuver your vessel. Coming to that, you see we have read loads of books, we know of course, it's become a thumb rule that the bow waves are positive and the stern waves are negative. Okay, we all know. We have started right from our perhaps mates or maybe from second mates time. But 
why are they positive, the bow waves? And why the stern waves are negative? Well, the lecture what I'm going to start with, it, with you all guys, it has a component of hypothesis. Therefore, when I'm trying to narrate the whole thing, I would ask you to be with me when I talk about the, the element of hypothesis. Now let's see, I've drawn this here, the figure one. Bow waves positive, stern waves negative. The vessel is going on this way, let's say zero, 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 zero north. From the hypothesis point of view, if I say, for the time being, if, let's say the water has stopped flowing, the ship has stopped moving, everything is stopped. Be with me for a few seconds or during the course of this lecture on a hypothetical grounds which will make you understand the thing much better. So coming to this, let's say the water has stopped moving, the ship has stopped, stopped moving, uh, the water has stopped flowing, the ship has start, stopped moving, everything has stopped. Now on that, on those grounds, if I hypothetically speaking, again, hypothetically speaking, if I pick up this particular vessel and keep it on this table, what do you see? Okay, you will see a void of a ship shape. That is nothing but underwater volume of displacement. Now, if I reel in again, Going back to the lab, what happens? When the ship of this underwater volume of displacement is moving, cutting through the water, what is happening? The water is receding into this underwater volume of displacement to fill up the void. And this is ha happening synchronously. It is happening every milliseconds, continuously, that we do not notice and we can never, never notice that. Now, because of that, because the water is gushing into this void, this void, as what I explained earlier, the water is gushing into it, so it's trying to fill in the void. So, we get some resistance from the water. Not only because of the speed, but because of the displacement followed by the underwater volume of displacement of the vessel which is making a headway. And because the water is receding, as the ship is making a way through forward, or headway, the water is receding, that is the reason it's got negative. So I hope, when we talk about this positive waves, why their bow waves are positive, or why the stern waves are negative, I think if we follow that little bit of hypothetical point of view, where I paused the actual scenario to make you all understand why the bow waves are construed as positive, and why the stern waves are construed as negative. <clears throat> if this point is not clear, kindly do me a favor. I have my page on the Facebook by the name of Marine Quest Solutions. I repeat, please send me the remarks and follow my page by the name of Marine Quest Solutions. And whatever feedback you may have, whatever more queries you may have, I will come back to you and try to do whatever the best I can. Thank you. Coming to the next point. What is the importance of pivot axis or pivot point? Again, we all have read about it. The pivot point, pivot axis is a virtual point is an imaginary point. Mm -hmm. The pivot axis, when the vessel is stationary, lies approximately at the center of the vessel. When the vessel is making a headway, the pivot point moves gradually to approximately one third of the vessel's distance from the bow. In other words, one third from the bow of the total length of the vessel approximately. And when the vessel is falling astern or weighing astern, the same pivot point 
moves approximately one third of the distance from the stern. Now, what is the importance of the pivot point? That's what we have to see. As you guys must have, uh, probably few of the senior people must have come across on bigger vessels like VLCCs, UNCCs. When you go for the SBM moorings, a normal standard practice is to maintain the trim of the vessel not exceeding three meters. It might be three, three and a half meter, but uh, internationally, all the terminals they expect your trim during ballast if you're going for a loading is not to exceed three meters. Now, when the vessel is, let's say, stopped and she is being maneuvered to the SVM, right? And if the windage area is more, you see this, if I've drawn this from the bow to this point, I call it PA, PA this has pivot axis. The fulcrum, the distance, this is the one which gives a leverage. When the vessel is taken to the, to the SVM moorings, with the help of a tub. The pivot axis, pivot point has to quite an extent, I would say perhaps maybe 90% of role it plays, whether when you are maneuvering the vessel towards during the pilotage or going alongside. The reason it has got the importance is as we said earlier, we all are aware of it, that when the vessel is at rest, it's at the midship, uh, not midship, at the center of the ship. And the vessel, when she's going astern, is about one third of the, uh, of the distance from the stern. And the, when the vessel is going headway, it's about one third from the bow. So, I will be coming back with my next lecture with the effect of squat, but just to appraise you. I will go slow by, uh, you know, one by one. The reason is I would be banking upon you all guys' feedback that what more do you want to know from me to the best of my knowledge and aptitude and whatever I've earned, uh, earned so far. And accordingly, I will cater to your requirements and frame the lecture with your request and with your inquisitiveness and with your queries. Now, squat, of course, we all have heard and known and uh, perhaps if some of us are not, not aware, the effect of squat enhances on a vessel. When the depth and draft relation is twice, in other words, if let's say my depth, is, my draft is 10 meters and the depth is 20 meters, that's the time the effect of squat enhances upon the vessel. Few things which we have to see is the block coefficient as well. For tankers, normally the block coefficient is more than 0.7. And a vessel which has got a block coefficient of more than 0.7 will squat by head. And the vessel which has got a block coefficient of less than 0.7 will squat by stern. Yeah, thank you.